Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. We're happy to have High Representative for the European Common Foreign Security Policy, Joseph Burrell, here today. The focus will be on U updates on Ukraine and re Russia's aggression against Ukraine. And he will make a statement, and then we will take some questions. Uh, High Representative, the floor is yours. If you prefer to sit. Thank you. Good afternoon. What uh, President Putin announced today constitute another major escalation on the unprovoked war that he has launched against Ukraine. It looked like uh, he is speaking of a measure of uh, panic and desperation. Putin is doubling on a failing strategy. By the threat of using nuclear weapons, he is trying to intimidate Ukraine and all countries that support Ukraine. But uh, he will fail. He has failed and he will fail again. Unfortunately, this late escalation is in line with the approach taken by the Russian regime until now. Putin threats to use all weapons resources at our disposal. This was its sentence. All weapons sources at our disposal implies the possibility of using weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons. And such a threat is unacceptable. Threatening with nuclear weapons is a real danger to the whole world. And the international community has to react in front of this threat. Doing it uh, <laughs> on uh, International Peace Day is even more cynical. Maybe it's a coincidence, but it is particularly shocking to hear such threats during the United Nations General Assembly when the world community unites to work on peace and progress. Russia's Putin is demonstrating again that it completely disregards the international norms, rules and principles. Rules and principles and norms that we have all signed, Russia also, as members of the United Nations. And these rules and principles start with territorial integrity. The intention to annex territories occupied by force since February 2022, and to hold uh, a sham referenda will not change their legal status. They are and they will remain internationally recognized as an integral part of Ukraine. And this is not going to change by holding a sham referenda. Now it's clear that Russia wants to destroy Ukraine by all means, violating international law and the United Nations Charter since the beginning. But now it looks like Russia's Putin, Putin wants to destroy Ukraine. And the international community gathered here in New York needs to take full measure of what is at stake. The Security Council will meet and discuss about Ukraine tomorrow in this new scenario. I will speak on behalf of the European Union to the Security Council. I will have the great honor and responsibility of addressing the Security Council on behalf of the European Union at that critical moment. And tonight, immediately after 
knowing the words of uh, Mr. Putin, I am convening an extraordinary and ad hoc informal meeting of the European Union foreign ministers with the purpose to agree on a common line. And the common line, I'm sure, could be summarized saying that we will not be intimidated and we will continue our full support for Ukrainian sovereignty and democracy and continue working for this war to stop as soon as possible before going into bigger challenges, before facing bigger threats, and before the international community have to react to such threats. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. The first question goes to the president of the UN Correspondents Association, Valeria Robeco Ansa. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, High Representative, for this uh, press briefing on behalf of the United Nations Correspondent Association. Valeria Robeco from Ansa News West Service. My question is, uh, what do you expect uh, from the meeting tonight? Uh, and uh, uh, how seriously do you take the nuclear threat from Putin what, uh, in concrete, their response uh, will be. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know that we already had the usual Foreign Affairs Council meeting that we always had when we are here in New York. We hold it on Monday. Now I have uh, to convene another one because I think it, the ministers have to discuss about these uh, threats to reiterate uh, the continuing support to Ukraine and to alert the international community about the unacceptable situation in which Putin is putting all of us. The ministers will discuss, and I, I can anticipate that they will discuss about how to continue our military support to Ukraine, how we continue putting pressure on Russia. The issue of sanctions will for sure be on the table. We have already said that in case of uh, holding uh, this kind of referenda or in case of annexation, new sanctions will come. So I will start proposing what to do with the sanctions. And we will reinforce our reach out to all states in the world in order to share with them our strong concern for this situation. So Mario Villar, FA. Mario Villar de la Agencia F. Aquí, señor Borrell. Si me permiten en español una pregunta, eh, comentaba usted de la amenaza nuclear del, del presidente ruso. Eh, ¿qué, ¿Qué tipo de respuestas va a preparar específicamente a esto eh, la Unión Europea? Y hablaba usted del incremento de las sanciones. ¿Qué tipo de medidas eh, va a plantear usted a los ministros cuando se reúnan esta noche? If you allow me, I'm going to, to try to answer in, in Spanish. I can repeat that later in English, but uh, there is translation. I, I don't think. Okay, I'm going. To allow me to say that in Spanish, and then I will translate it in English. No, I, 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 it's not uh, very often that they have the possibility of answering in Spanish. So, uh, look, um, how can I summarize on the previous question? You know, the, the nuclear power station of Saporizhia is in a dire situation. The risk of a nuclear accident, let's call it accident, in Saporizhia is very high. And not only very high because the bombs are falling on the immediate vicinity of a nuclear station. Can you imagine a nuclear station, the bigger nuclear station in Europe being bombed around it. Uh, 
I said I was going to answer in Spanish. <laughs> and I jumped to English. I said that uh, que, eh, que el riesgo de un accidente nuclear, vamos a llamarle accidente, eh, no es despreciable. La mayor central nuclear de Europa está siendo bombardeada en su perímetro inmediato. Y la Agencia Internacional de la Energía nos dice que está funcionando en unas condiciones de precariedad alarmantes. Nadie tendría la caldera de gas de su calefacción en casa funcionando en condiciones de precariedad alarmante, ¿verdad? Porque todo sería consciente de que corre un cierto riesgo y repararía esa caldera. Bueno, pues la mayor central nuclear de Europa está, nos dicen, trabajando en condiciones de precariedad. El riesgo de un accidente nuclear no es despreciable, es lo que nos dice la Agencia Internacional de la Energía Atómica. No hay que ser alarmistas, pero hay que ser consciente de los riesgos. Y ahora nos dice Putin que está dispuesto a utilizar todas las armas a su alcance y cuando alguien dice eso es porque en todas incluye las armas nucleares. Es una enorme irresponsabilidad y algo completamente inaceptable para la comunidad internacional. Hoy los ministros van a discutir la reacción europea, que no le puedo anticipar porque mis colegas no estarían muy satisfechos. Tendré que explicárselo después. Pero ciertamente vamos a insistir en las medidas que hemos tomado de apoyo militar, de presión económica, con sanciones sobre Rusia y de acción diplomática internacional. Well, I was saying that uh, the, the biggest nuclear power station in Europe is working in precarious conditions. And nobody would have a, the boiler, the, the heating boiler system in his house working in precarious conditions, because it would be aware of the risk. So we, we don't have to be alarmist, but we have to be aware of the risk. And that's what the International Atomic Energy is telling us. You have to take measures in order to create a perimeter of securization of the central. So a nuclear accident, let's call it nuclear accident, may happen. But what Putin says is that he's ready to use all arms at his disposal. And when someone says all, implicitly means also the nuclear arms. And this is an extraordinarily grave responsibility and something that the international community cannot accept. And we Europeans will discuss about how to reach out how the United Nations themselves, the United Nations in this week, has to react. I cannot tell you which are the measures that we will propose, because certainly I have to do it first with my colleagues. But we will continue doing more of the same. More of the same means military support, economic pressure on Russia, and diplomatic reach out to the rest of the world. Pam Fox, CBS News. Thank you so much, High Commissioner. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Both President Biden and President Macron emphasized the need for unity at the UN at, in 193 countries and on the security, well, maybe not on the Security Council, and uh, to focus on countries that believe they are non-aligned or abstain. What can be done to achieve, what have you done to achieve some kind of unity so that the world is sending the same message that you are? Thank you. The situation requires a high level diplomatic involvement. And we have to do a, a kind of political pedagogy in order to explain which are the causes of the war and which are the consequences of this war. People agree on rejecting the causes, and nobody is supporting an aggression, or almost nobody is supporting an aggression like the one that Russia has perpetrated against Ukraine. But when, they, uh, when we come to the consequences, 
certainly people are much more worried about the consequences than in the causes, because the consequences, they suffer. We suffer. The whole world is suffering. Ukraine is being bombed by missiles. And the rest of the world is being bombed by high prices of electricity, fuel, and food, which creates inflation, which makes the central bank reacting, raising interest rates, which creates financial trouble, which is low growth, which creates unemployment. And this is a vicious circle. The whole world is paying the consequences of this war, 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 not the sanctions. Yesterday, we had to issue a new statement from the European Union in order to insist on what I've been saying since the beginning. Our sanctions doesn't target food or fertilizers. The trade of foods and fertilizers is free. And we clarify one again to all economic actors, providers of insurance, providers of services, transportation, that they can, they can be involved on exports of food and fertilizers from Russia to the whole world. Look, we Europeans, we are buying fertilizers to Russia. So how could we be preventing third countries also buying fertilizers if we do? So no problem with that. It's clear. It's not the sanctions. It's the war itself. And we have to engage in a battle of narrative, which is not going to be win overnight, will require a stubborn, continuous, and clever reach out to our, pe our colleagues and partners around the world. I can take more questions because I understand the situation required. Okay. <laughs> uh, Michelle Nichols Reuters. Thank you, uh, Mr. Burrell, for the briefing. Um, I just wanted to follow up. Are you, Sergey Lavrov is in town this week. Are you planning to meet with him? Is that something that might be discussed at your meeting this evening? And do you think meeting with him could achieve anything? Uh, to tell the truth, uh, no, no. I'm not, I'm not planning to meet uh, Sergey Lavrov. We'll well, this was an easy question to answer. Huh? I was in Ukraine for 40 days, so I, I did experience from first sight the war from the beginning. And European nations are delivering arms and, and all what they can as equipments for the uh, Ukrainian army. Let's say Putin acts on his threat. Is it enough just to provide arms? Do you think that European nations will bring soldiers f on the foot in Ukraine just to really not let this catastrophe happen. This is my first question. Second question, if you don't mind, about the nuclear deal. We see the escalation uh, between Raisi and Biden. Do you think it's going to let the deal uh, turn down, or it's just a political way of just uh, lifting the ceiling? Well, let's be clear about that. Since the beginning, we have said that we are not belligerent, that we are not engaged in the war. One thing is to provide military support, and another thing is to engage in the war directly. It's not the case, and it will not be the case. We are not participating in the war. We are not belligerent. We are just supporting Ukraine. Last question, Edie Letter, AP. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Burrow. You just said that you're not engaged in the war, you're providing military equipment. With uh, Putin uh, calling up 300,000 new troops, um, how can the, how do you think the EU should respond to that? Because it's certainly going to provoke uh, new requests from Ukraine for equipment. And if the Russians do take any kind of nuclear action, can they, can they expect a response from the EU that would be perhaps demanding engagement? Allow me to not to engage in a chain of if, 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 if. I am dealing with the real circumstances of the war the way it is now. 
And the way it is now, we are not going to engage directly. We will support Ukraine, which is, by, by the way, quite an important effort. So the recipe is more of the same, more of the same. Military support, economic and individual sanctions, and diplomatic reach out with the rest of the world. Can you answer Everybody's one more question? Everybody's a little bit over Just one more, question. Two one more questions. Two more questions. One more question. One more question. Um, I am going to uh, focus on Iran. Thank you so much, Iran. by the way, no, for doing no. this. The focus is on Ukraine. Thank you very much. We'll take one more I, I, question I here at AFP. I said everything about Ukraine yesterday. Nothing new since then. Sir, you're saying the recipe is more of the same. Isn't Vladimir Putin counting on you and the EU to do more of the same? What will more of the same do to a president who has just called up hundreds of thousands of new troops? What will more of the same achieve? You know, one thing is to call, and another thing is to have. I can call a lot of things. You can call 300,000 soldiers, you will not have them tomorrow on the front line. Do you not have to do something different, take a new approach? We will continue supporting Ukraine with the military support that we can provide. I cannot say anything more. Thank you very much. Uh, no, no, one, this is it. We're a little over scheduled. He has to go to his next appointment. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah.